<laughs> Dang. Can I see the one you said thank you? <laughs> Just like everybody, how everybody friendly was and stuff. That's a good no, one. I, I, love it. I can't that tell you the rest. <laughs> it's X rated. No. I met a bucket list person. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Your wealth is not, should not come at the expense of poor people or indigenous communities. And it's time to look at yourself in the mirror because you're hurting a lot of people endangering a lot of people and children. And we have the right to live just like you. And why is it okay for our lives to be expendable? It's time to invest in renewable energy. Treaty Camp Raid, October 2016, when the law enforcement arrested over 180 people and we were there on the front line and to see young people shot with rubber bullets and maced and beaten with batons and to be there and like hold my ground for five hours to watch everybody getting arrested and when the buffalo came over the hill the buffalo came over the hill like running in the field where the police were and that feeling of like divine intervention but then the police and the yellow helico dapple helicopter chased the, the buffalo away. I will never forget that. What, baby? No more makeup? Yeah, no more makeup. That's it. We were at work maybe four years ago and we seen in the local newspaper in Bismarck that they were building this pipeline. And according to federal law, they have to consult with the tribe and they didn't do that. So we contacted them and... Oh. Was it no more? Yeah, no more. Go put it away. And I testified before the South Dakota Public Utilities Commission on behalf of the tribe, saying that we did not want this pipeline. It was a danger to our drinking water. The company came to the Standing Rock Sioux Tribal Council chambers, and our tribe told them, as well as our chairman, that we thank them for coming, but that it was too close to our source of our drinking water, and there were sacred sites along the path. We were very clear because people did question us, saying that the tribe didn't respond, but we did. We were very explicit in our words and said we didn't want the pipeline. 
uh, my name is Washdewi Young and I am from Standing Rock. I am Dakota and Lakota. I was born and raised here on Standing Rock. I live here with my family. I lived in other cities and came back because it's my community is a place that I love and I want to invest in it and help change it for the better. I worked for the tribe for almost 14 years as the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer. Hello? Yeah. America is this ideal that people aspire to, like people call it the American dream, to be free and to speak your mind and practice whatever religion you are but that doesn't apply to people of color because at the foundation of it, America was built on the blood, the sweat, and the tears of indigenous people, African people. America is great if you're white. So I grew up with um, the systemic racism that exists. So I'm always aware and on guard when I leave the reservation. I know that we're gonna be followed in the stores or profiled driving or, you know, and that's really sad, but it's the truth. And so for me, the way the law enforcement reacted and responded to the whole situation, the protest, it wasn't a surprise to me. But to the world, it's crazy because the world got to see it, what we live, and they responded. For many years, I thought that nobody cared. But this proved me wrong. It proved us wrong. And um, I'm happy because now there's camps all over the United States. Last August, when the construction started for the pipeline, like 25 miles from here, a lot of people went out there physically and stood there and it was people from my community. There's so many young people that were at camp that I seen, I know their families and how they're affected by drugs and alcohol. But this being at camp gave them a purpose. It gave them hope again. We experienced, I don't know how to say like, true freedom out there, even though we were surrounded by cops and helicopters and snipers. Everything in, in camp was centered around prayer. It definitely started something, sparked a fire. They tried to bury us, but they didn't know we were the seeds. Yes. We were the seed. The best memory. Someone was playing guitar and a harmonica, like by the toilets. And so I came out of the porta potty and it was um, Neil Young, the singer. And he was um, 
He was walking from camp to camp, and he walked to um, right next to our camp where the horses were kept. This is my recording. Very dark. Thank you. 